I'd like to just extend a welcome to you all this morning. I am Councillor Carroll, the Vice Chairman of the Council, uh, standing in for the Chairman who is not well, and it's nice to welcome you each one, especially our young people who are our uh, leaders for tomorrow in every walk of life. So it's nice to see the young people, and the not so young, it's nice to see them as well. We're all here, and we're all here to celebrate the life of uh, Frank Wise, who of course has connections here with Skelton. His father, Ben Wilde, which uh, goes back to in the days he was here, in the days when the Wesleyan Church had a school uh, way back there, and Ben Wilde was the headmaster of that school. After that, we don't know much about this show that is it is in great detail. Uh, but no doubt our special guest who is here with us this morning, who is uh, Angie Butler, who is the writer of the life of Grant Wilde. But first I want to introduce one or two individual people. We've got St. Peter's School from Broughton. There they are, looking happy and better to be here than sitting in the classroom, isn't it? And we have a nice intellectual group in that corner there from Freeborough Academy. And they're going to really stick your brains as the day moves on. And it's also <coughs> nice to have the Skelton History Group, our local Skelton History Group, they're also here with us this morning, and they've also done a good bit of research from uh, their point of view into the life of Frank Wilde. And as you can see by the exhibition, and of course the plaque that will ultimately be unveiled, uh, there's quite a little bit about this man that uh, has been in the shadow, so to speak, as far as we are concerned here in Skelton. But uh, this morning we'll all learn a little bit we didn't know when we came in. So let us give to uh, our good friend here a real good warm skeleton welcome. She has a few words with us now, after which uh, Councillor Alwyn here will give a word of thanks on behalf of all of us. And then we will proceed to the unveiling itself. And then after that, we'll all have a good cup of tea. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, is it? We'll all have a cup of and something to eat. So let's give a warm welcome to our special guest. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, um, I feel so honoured to be invited today uh, to come and unveil the plaque of this truly great man, John um, we call him Frank Wilde, um, but um, John Robert Francis Wilde, he was christened, and it's his birthday today, 140 years ago he was born here uh, in Skelton. And um, I think uh, when I was driving up here and looking at the countryside and the wonderful hills and the stone and these, um, the whole sort of feel of this area, it just felt to me absolutely right that... Um, Frank Wilde was born here. Um, the, the ruggedness of it all just completely relates to this great man. And when I say great man, probably one of the greatest polar explorers ever. So that is so important that he was remembered here. He was right up there with Sir Ernest Shackleton, um, with Captain Robert Scott, and uh, with Douglas Mawson, all the great polar explorers. Um, but many people haven't really heard of him, particularly today, because he was a very quiet man, a very modest man, a man very happy to be a lieutenant, just to always be behind these great leaders. He was the only man to go down on expedition down um, to Antarctica on five occasions. The only, the second man in history to have the polar medal with four bars. The only man ever <coughs> to winter in Antarctica six on six occasions. And he was only um, five foot four and a half, and that's my height, so he wasn't very tall. Um, one of 13 children, the eldest son of all these uh, siblings. He had these ice blue eyes, and people always remarked on these eyes. And when one reads about 
how he remained calm when things went really wrong on these expeditions, when their lives literally just hung on a thread. There was something about Frank Wilde's countenance that he never showed an enormous amount of emotion. He just remained calm. And all the men looked to him to get them out of these really awful situations. One, of course, which was when they were stranded on Elephant Island for four and a half months. They were um, freezing to death. They were starving. They didn't know they would be rescued. And they, it, there was quite the possibility that Shackleton, who'd set off across the Weddell Sea, an 800-mile journey in the small James Caird boat um, to look for help. They didn't know whether he would make it, and if he hadn't made it, um, no one would have known that Frank Wilde, who was in charge of these 21 men, would be rescued. So it was Frank Wilde, and this is just one of the many things that he did in that period called the Heroic Age, um, which was 1901 to 1922 down in Antarctica, and of course he also spent time in the Arctic. And people ask me, why did I become interested in him? I was very interested in the heroic age, and I was reading a lot about Shackleton, and I came across this man, Frank Wilde, and, um, and I read that he'd gone out to South Africa in 1923, and he'd been very much forgotten, and he died 16 years later in 1939. And the headlines in the newspapers in this country was Great Antarctic Hero Forgotten. And, um, and then I started to read that he was a, an alcoholic, he was drifting, he was penniless, friendless, and he was lost. And worse than that, when he died in 1939, no one knew what had happened to his remains. So I started my quest and I call it my quest after his final um, expedition, which was called the quest, to try and change um, this perception of Frank Wilde, because I knew that he deserved much more. And so I started just over seven years of researching him. And I always, I know this sounds very strange, because I'm quite down to earth and very pragmatic, that I felt there was some sort of guidance, and that if I just stuck to what I was trying to do, which was to find out his life in South Africa, to get his memoirs, which he'd written, to get them published, published, which he failed to do, um, and to try and find his remains, if I was steadfast, that I would succeed. And um, I'd love to tell you the whole story about Frank Wilde, but um, in short, I did finally find his remains in his ashes in a box, in a vault under a church. And um, with the permission of his descendants, um, he's got many descendants in Australia, and with the permission of the governor of the Falklands and South Georgia, we took these ashes two years ago back to South Georgia to be buried alongside the great man in his life, and the man that he'd, he'd gone on three expeditions with, Sir Ernest, Sir Ernest Shackleton. And so um, we took the ashes in, um, I, I also run a small um, expedition uh, company where we take people up to the Arctic and down to Antarctica. So in our ship, and with six of his descendants, and with Sir Ernest Shackleton's granddaughter, we took Frank Wilde's remains and we buried them alongside Shackleton. And people asked me, well, was that the right thing to do? And, well, I knew in my research it was absolutely the right thing to do because his second wife, when she died in Johannesburg, when her ashes were scattered, his were held in the spot under the church. He wrote about Shackleton's funeral and what a wonderful place South Georgia um, which is right in the Southern Ocean, what a wonderful place it would be to be buried there. And also there were many other things, it was the Antarctic Society of Johannesburg that tried to get his ashes down to South Georgia, but he died just before um, the outbreak of the Second World um, War, and so it was impossible to do it. So we managed to do it. But I always felt that um, something was 
missing. And I think today that has changed because we're going to unveil this, which I'm sure is a wonderful plaque. And he's now remembered here in this wonderful part of the world. Um, and so for, for me, really, it's another page of history. So thank you. Wow. Thank you. Um, it's, it's quite an honour to, uh, to have been invited this morning, although I didn't realise that I was uh, having anything to say till the uh, very last minute, but I'm sure you will all, all agree uh, it's an amazing story. And, and it's ours, which is even more amazing. And I'd like to thank you for, for bringing this all to light and making it such a fantastic um, story to tell to everybody. And I was speaking to Jackie earlier about um, the amount of unsung heroes that actually come from our borough. And, and what, as was uh, slightly mentioned earlier, I was the mayor um, last year. And it took me, the job took me right across the borough. Uh, but mainly, uh, I say, in the East Cleveland area, I seem to do a lot of work um, over here. So for me, it was a massive learning curve about, you know, the culture, um, which is pretty similar to mine in, in, in Eston, but not as, it's just fantastic East Cleveland. I loved it then and I love it now. So to be given the cabinet post for culture, tourism and leisure, um, really, it helped me just to step into to this post. But to be part of this today and to honour uh, an, an unsung hero, as was, um, it, it's just amazing for him to be real to us now and to have something there that's firm and, and the story uh, as it's told is just amazing. And I'd just like to say thank you on behalf of the, the council uh, and the people of East Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is a really important point because I did say that um, he was really written up as this friendless drifter who drank too much and it, I proved and it's very much in my book um, as his biographer that all of that was complete nonsense. He was definitely a heavy drinker and he was a great party man but he had so many friends. He was loved by so many people and he worked so hard in Johannesburg. So all these things that were um, you know, that, that were written about Frank Wilde were actually false. And I think um, if, if that's the one thing that I am proud about that book is that we have turned that reputation around. So, you know, it's absolutely right that you should be proud of this great man. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, we would like to adjourn to the boy uh, there. We are now going to invite you to unveil the plaque in memory of the man who have you researched all those years and this is the combination of your search, the unveiling of the plaque right here in Scalzo. Thank you. Well, it gives me great pleasure and it's a great honour to unveil this plaque of the wonderful man, Skelton Frank Wilde. Thank you.